Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. Um, I recently read um, a memoir and that I really liked, um, loved, and that was um, Anne Summers' uh, new book Unfettered and Alive, which was published just recently, beginning of 2019. I will talk about this book uh, later on in one of my recent reads, or I think it will even make the tops and flops uh, on the top side of March. Um, but when I read this uh, this book, I again, was reminded how much I love this genre, memoirs. Um, and I thought, why not make a video and talk to you about, recommend a couple of memoirs that I really liked. So that's, in short, what this video is about. But before I start with the book recommendation, I have to show you something. A present that I got from um, a friend of mine who is also a book lover, and she gave me this. And this is a book brush. Can you believe it that something like that exists? You can dust your books with this, you know, clean it from dust. Isn't that fabulous? Yeah, anyway, I was enchanted. I thought it was fabulous. And only a book lover could give this to another book lover. But anyway, on to the memoirs. And the first memoir I want to talk to you about and recommend is Diana Atthill's novel, oh, memoir novel, <laughs> Memoir Stet, uh, published in 2000. Now, Stet is a word from editing. You know, when you cross something out and then you underline it and write Stet, it means the word or the sentence should remain and should not be crossed out. Uh, Diana Atthill was an editor for most of her life. Uh, uh, she just sadly passed away in January of this year, but she was 102 and she had the most fascinating life. She wrote a couple of memoirs um, uh, about her life and this one is about, it's also called An Editor's Life. So it's about her early um, encounters with editing uh, when she ventured into the career, into the career of editing um, it, you know, in the mid 20th century. She was born in 1918, I believe. No, couldn't be because she was 102 and she died. Anyway, <laughs> so this is a, a, a memoir where she tells us about her work as an editor. Uh, if you love books, this is a memoir for you. And if I, if I look at memoirs and try to find out or to try to um, explain what I think is a really successful, good memoir, uh, then it's, of course, the writing has to be engaging. You know, you have to be interested in, in the person. So it should tell me something about the person. But for me, it always has to be broader than that. I have, I, I love memoirs if they uh, not only tell me something about that particular person's life, but about a certain topic. Uh, or a subject, or a time period, or a country. So in this case of Diane, Diana Atthill's uh, editor's uh, memoir, it's uh, uh, on the one hand telling me something about book editing and the books she edited and the uh, famous authors she met, um, and it also tells you something about the time period of publishing. Um, uh, before, uh, you know, the 21st century. So I love this memoir. And if you are interested in uh, somebody who worked as an editor and to learn more, and besides that, Diana Attil is an absolutely fascinating person, I can highly recommend this memoir. The next memoir I want to recommend to you is A.M. Holmes, The Mistress's Daughter, published in 2007. Amy Holmes is an American writer. She was born in 1961. Um, she wrote many acclaimed novels. Um, you've probably heard of her or read her. Um, and this is the, the account of her life being an adopted child. Um, Amy Holmes was um, given away by her birth mother um, before Amy even was born. Um, uh, Amy's mother, as we learn, uh, that's not a spoiler because that's the, the premise of the book. Amy's mother um, became pregnant uh, by her lover, who was a married man, hence the mistress's daughter. Amy Holmes is the mistress's daughter. And so she gave up Amy for adoption. And when Amy Holmes was uh, already uh, an adult, her biological parents uh, th yeah, found her, 
quote unquote. And the memoir is mainly discussing uh, adoption, identity, what it may, meant for Amy Holmes to be found, quote unquote, by her uh, biological parents, how she deals with, with this. But it's, like I said previously, it explores uh, the, the the topic in a broader sense. It really talks about um, identity, family ties, um, like I said, what it means to be adopted. I thought it was a fascinating book. I really enjoy Amy Holmes's work anyway, her, her novels. Um, but this one, um, if you're interested in, in this topic of family and... and um, how your identity is formed by your family, biological or not, uh, then this is certainly a, a memoir that you will find very, very enjoyable. Recommendation number three is um, a translated book, Delphine de Vigan, Nothing Holds Back the Night. Um, I think published in France in 2011 and translated um, into English um, a couple of years later. Um, Delphine de Vigan, of course, is a French author um, who mainly writes novels. And if you're following me, you probably heard me talk about her because I really, really love her work. She just had a new book out, by the way, um, in January, a new novel. Um, but this one is a memoir about mainly about Delphine de Vigan's mother, Lucille. Um, Lucille uh, had Delphine when she was very young a teenager even still, and she raised uh, Delphine and her sister uh, on her own as a single mother. Uh, Lucille was uh, from a bohemian-like family, um, and as Delphine de Vigan describes her, uh, she was not like other mothers. She was uh, flashy and, um, uh, you know, into fashion, and she wore lipstick, and she was art, art, artsy, if, if that is a word. Uh, but uh, her life um, became quite sad and harrowing. She was ill. She had delusions. And the book, the whole book is um, after um, uh, an inquiry into her mother's life by, by Delphine de Vigan after her mother had died. So it's a search uh, to piece together um, the life of this um elusive, uh, the elusive life of this woman with this different aspects of being very, um, you know, fancy, but also uh, suffering from depression, what it means to be a single mother uh, during that time, the 1960s. I thought it was a fascinating book, uh, exploring those themes um, in a very um, engaging way, but also uh, interesting. Um, you learn something about the time period and about the the, um, the French life, for for want of a better word. So I I really loved it, um, and I'm sure if you try it, you will love it too. And from a memoir about daughter and mother, we move on to a memoir about daughter and father. And that is Keggy Caro's 2016 book, Dadlands. Uh, she won the Costa Award uh, for biography with this book in 2016. Uh, she was born, Keggy Caro, I mean, she was born in Gibraltar, but grew up in Hampshire. Um, and this book um, starts, uh, it's about Keggy Caro's father, Tom, um, and it opens, the memoir opens, or the reason uh, you could say the motive for this memoir is that uh, Tom Carew starts uh, uh, to have uh, signs of de dementia, uh, he loses his memories, starts losing his memories, and this book is Kagi, his daughter's uh, attempt um, to preserve her father's life. And she learns a lot about his life um, during this investigation, if you want to call it that, because Tam Tom Carroll had quite an interesting life. He was a part of an elite uh, parachute unit, <clears throat> excuse me, during the Second World War. So it's um, uh, a book that tries to retrace and find um, uh, the, the father's history, but it's also a book about the present, uh, where uh, Keggy and her father, Tom, try to come to terms with uh, the father's failing 
um, memory and his dementia. Uh, I thought it was a, a brilliant book, um, quite a different way of um, uh, tackling this subject. Um, and as with all the books I'm talking about, because otherwise I wouldn't mention them, I can highly recommend it. And the last of my recommendation is also a 2016 book, so fairly recently, and that is Jenny Diskey's memoir, In Gratitude. Um, Jenny Diskey uh, um, was an English writer, mainly uh, essays and nonfiction, but she also wrote fiction. And in 2014, she was diagnosed uh, with, term, with inoperable cancer, and she was told that she was probably going to have a year or maybe two to live. So this is Jenny Diskey's last book uh, because she died in 2016. And it's uh, a twofold memoir. It's about um, this diagnosis and the the way that Jenny Diskey tries to deal with the fact that she was diagnosed with terminal cancer, but it's also about a subject that she hadn't talked about or hadn't written about before, and that was the fact that when Jenny Diskey was 15 and quite a troubled teenager, she was taken in uh, more or less by chance by the famous writer Doris Lessing to live with her, with Doris Lessing. So this book is also an exploration of 50 years of the relationship, um, not quite a mother-daughter relationship, but something of the kind of the sort between um, this uh, Jenny Diskey as a writer and this very famous writer Doris Lessing. I thought the combination of these two uh, topics were fascinating. Um, it's not... Um, yeah, an uplifting memoir in in a way, of course, because it's it's also about a terminal illness, and you know that Jenny Diskey dies in two thousand sixteen, but still, it's a very, um, yeah, a very tender book in a way, and the the relationship between Diskey and Lessing is complicated and sometimes um, difficult, uh, but um, I think if you are interested, for instance, in Doris Lessing and want to know more about her life, then uh, Jenny Diskey's memoir is a perfect way to enter that and to learn more about this famous Nobel Prize winning writer. So these were five memoirs that I want to recommend to you. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the video. Let me know whether you read any of the memoirs or whether you're interested or whether you can recommend any memoirs to me. Uh, and I'll see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.